Tijuana. What a night, baby! Welcome in to Soccer Nation TV, powered by Soccer Loco, coming to you from Soccer Loco headquarters here in beautiful San Diego, California, America's finest city. My name is Nate Abarea, joined alongside me by the editor in chief of SoccerNation.com and my co host on the Soccer Nation podcast, cleaning himself up over there. He's already silky smooth and so clean already. DK Aniwa, how are you doing, sir? I'm well, thank you for asking and thank you for complimenting me. <sighs> I'm a big fan of compliments. Um, I'm also a big fan of knowing what I'm doing and at the moment, I'm not too sure I do. Do I know what I'm doing? I hope so because otherwise we're lost. Do they know what we're doing? If you tell them, maybe they will. Ah. You may be wondering what the heck is going on here. Soccer Nation TV. You've heard of SoccerNation.com, the online voice of soccer in San Diego, Baja, California, and beyond, locally grown, nationally known. We're taking it to the online airwaves. We've got an online TV show that is going to spotlight all the things that we love about the beautiful game, from everything going on in our backyard here in San Diego to stories from all around this soccer world, spotlighting the person personalities, the flavors of soccer, and why we love this game so much. Did I condense that enough for everybody? Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, I think I'm more, more educated than I was a few minutes ago. Should we get on with this thing? I think we can transition. Well, we have a first guest here on this show. We're going to bring him in in a minute. He is a South Sudanese international, a San Diegan at heart. Cannot wait to talk with this guy. His name is Dutch Jock. <laughs> Our debut guest on Soccer Nation TV, a full senior international for the South Sudan, a proud San Diegan himself, Mr. Dutch Jock. Dutch, how you doing, sir? I'm good, thank you. So, first off, tell the story of how you came to San Diego, because people hear that and go, wait, he's a South Sudanese international, but he's also a proud San Diegan. You are indeed both. Yes, sir. <laughs> You know, I grew up here. Um, coming coming back from uh, well, coming from South Sudan, my family family migrated to uh, Texas first, Dallas, Texas. Only stayed there for about a year, and they decided that it wasn't the place for us. The weather was just crazy. Um, coming from South Sudan, a place that's hot and humid, Texas wasn't the place because we came in the winter time, so <laughs> it was cold. So we had family here in San Diego that said, "Hey, come over," and that's when we decided to move down here back in '94. So ever since then, it's been my home. You got to tell the story of the first team that you played on, the first soccer team that you played on in San Diego, out in City Heights, Eagle Nile, if I recall correctly. Eagle Nile. We got to we got to talk about Eagle Nile, man, because this is a great, great story. So this is what happened with Eagle Nile. Um, I've never really played competitive or organized until I moved to San Diego. Uh, we made a team based of our cousins and brothers, and some of the neighborhood kids when we were younger, to have this team, Eagle Nile. And it was actually coached by um, one of our uncles at the time. You know, and just growing up playing with your brothers or your cousins, there's nothing better than that. Because you're, you're already a family, and then now you're into the competitive stage of, of playing. And just growing up and being able to play, actually, was, was fun. Um, my older brother was on the team. Two of my cousins were on the team. And their brothers were on the team. So it was all, it was all a family-built built team. And it was in the City Heights neighborhood. You know, and so it, it kept us in tro out of trouble. Uh, and so it's something we look forward to every single day. And that was just a little backstory of the Eagle Nile. And we actually still exist. We still do kind of play together. And even though we're older now, but we get together and, and we still play. So we still hold that 
that history and, and that part of us. So I want to talk with you about, you know, obviously your soccer career. And, and this is something that, that a lot of people need to know about because your pathway back to the South Sudan is one of the most beautiful stories I've ever heard, how, how life comes full circle through the beautiful game. And South Sudan gains its independence, gets a national soccer team soon after, and then you get to be a part of that national soccer team going back to your homeland to play in, in African Cup of Nations qualifiers, to play against some of the biggest names in African football in the South Sudan. Talk about how that all came about and, and how life has kind of come full circle for you in that regard. You know, it's, it's one of those to where as an individual, you kind of got to map out your goals and your dreams and what you want out of it. And you, you kind of got to see what routes to take and what routes not to take to, to get to your goal. So I had, I had a vision. It started with a vision. Um, I knew soccer, soccer was for me, was my outlet. Um, not only just mentally, just physically, just it, it allowed me to be free, allowed me to just enjoy myself. Um, from all the struggles that we have gone through, and each of us got their own struggles in life. Um, soccer for me was just that, that thing that I just, I enjoy, I love doing, regardless of what's happening. So I had this vision when I was younger, and, and that was even before South Sudan became mm -hmm. a country. I said, hey, one day I'm gonna play for South Sudan national team. And I'm gonna play against Sudan national team, wearing my own national team jersey. And it's something that I've, I've kept be, in the back of my head, didn't know what was going to happen. I had no clue what was going to go on with the referendum, with South Sudan splitting from, from Sudan. I had no clue about that. But it was a dream that as a kid I had in mind. There's nothing greater than representing your own country. Nothing at all. In any sport. In any sp so we finally became our own country. Um, a year later, we finally had a national team, was part of FIFA. And now the, the big buzz was getting players and finding players that can represent and so being a player from outside of, 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 of the country uh, that played at a high level here, I was one of the favorites to get called up. Finally got called up, and I remember what, when I got that phone call and that email, and it, it was a shock at first. It was a shock. It was a shock because now it came a reality. Now it's, it's really happening in its life, and I'm actually going to be playing for my country. All right, that first game in South Sudan where you're – on the way to the stadium, you're on the team bus. I've heard this story before. I want to share this story right now. Bus is just smashing through the streets with a police escort. Yeah. You guys are getting to the stadium. How hot is it outside oh, of this, this like game? 115 degrees. 115 yeah. degrees, nice and cool, perfect weather for soccer. Put us in that place. Put us, put us in that place of heading to that stadium in the South Sudan for an African Cup of Nations qualifier. It's, it's an amazing feeling, amazing feeling. Sometimes it's, it's one you can't even explain. Uh, just, just the atmosphere, the build-up to that day, to game day. The whole country is just, is just on, and people are talking about soccer, talking about the players, talking about the team coming in and who plays for who. And This was a team that had big-name players playing in the EPL, top, top league in the world. This was the, the, the Benin match. The Benin match. Right, with, yes. uh, with Rudy Justin yes, and with, yes. with Sessignon. Sessignon, yes, yes. And, and, and so the day before the match, we had to sit down and do the interview and the media. And already your heart is pumping because now it's becoming real, um, just a day before the game. So game day, wake up in the morning, same routine, breakfast, um, get together as a team, team meeting. Your heart is still pumping. Now you're getting nervous. You're getting nervous because... You, now you got to perform. That's when it comes down to performing. So we're driving through the whole country. We got a police escort. The fun thing about it was we didn't stop in traffic. There was no stopping. We just kept going, just cruising. We're probably going like maybe 40 miles per hour, 45 miles per hour in the city. It's honking. You got the police escorts on the side. As you drive through the city, you have fans cheering, um, you know, just cheering you on. And just the experience of, of that segment before we even get to the stadium well, just like a reality check. Finally got to the stadium, turned the corner. You can see the stadium. Once you turn the corner, you can kind of see the stadium, and you can see most of the stands from the opposite side. So once we turned that corner um, and we looked as players, we're all, all in the windows trying to see what's going on. And the stadium was already packed, jam-packed. This is about two hours before the game. The stadium is packed. And you can hear the noise, the drums, everybody just, like, excited. 
turned that corner, saw the crowd, and we just heard a roar. Because then they seen our bus pulling up. <laughs> and the whole roar was just, and, you know, as players, we got excited. We started smiling, you know, started giving each other high fives. Pulled right into the stadium. Um, at that point, when you're in the stadium, you can't hear a word. You can't hear someone next to you because it's just that loud. Just uh, the cheering, and the, the drumming. W went inside the, the locker room, um, still buzzing. You can't hear a thing. You can only try to yell or scream or even just get to their ear and try to whisper, you know. And so now you realize that this is the moment when you're about to walk out of the stadium, when you're about to perform in front of millions of people. Because the, the, the game was, was, was also live on national TV. Um, and, and so it wasn't only the people in the stadium, it was just all over, and mostly all over Africa because Benin also was watching oh, yeah. their team play. Oh, yeah. And, you know, as a player, you just kind of sit there and you, you have a moment to yourself, you know, however long you, you need. And now, once you run out that stadium and you go out, like I said, it's electrifying. It's like electricity just going through your body, just jolting. But then you got to perform, so you can't even think about that. You have no time <laughs> to now you're, you're on the stage to freeze up. Now you got to just bypass that and, and start focusing. So like I said, it's, it's a different, different feeling, being on the field and being on the stands. Just a buzz. All right, so you coach locally here with Del Mar Carmel Valley Sharks, and, and you love interacting with, with all the kids, all the boys and girls in, in the Sharks programs. One story that, that I want to hear from you is what it's like interacting with the kids, specifically with the youth when you go back to the South Sudan for these national team games. That's something I've, I've heard from you in the past, and, and it's just it's, it's incredible to hear directly from you about these interactions with, with these young people in the South Sudan and, and interacting with them on a soccer and a human level. And, you know, it's, it's a little different when I do go back home to South Sudan. It's different. Different in terms of just, uh, you, you can say the passion of the sport is different. Here in the, in the U.S., predominantly, kids are doing it because it's an activity. You know, their parents want them to be out the house uh, and, and, and just put you in soccer, baseball, or basketball. Um, it's not really a self-choice that they grew up with and they choose to play soccer. Back home, soccer is all we know. You know, it's all it's all we we, we know, and and like sports in general, I I would say you know even like basketball, and wrestling is big back home, and I didn't know this until a couple of years ago. Really, wrestling is humongous in South Sudan. Wrestling in the South wrestling Sudan. Wrestling in the South Sudan. Yes. Okay, but you know just just soccer interacting with kids when we do go, obviously they see us as these superstars, you know, as these players that have played the game and they played for big teams and now they're playing for the country. And some of them only have heard of us and have glimpse of, of pictures of us on, on social media or newspaper. And once they actually see us as, as, as a body form, as a human, um, they're amazed. And they're amazed in terms of they now feel like they can also get there. It gives them confidence. And just talking to them about soccer, excitement, the joy, you know, Sometimes they don't want to talk. They want to just kick the ball around. So <laughs> running, you know. Dutch, tell us about uh, Football for Peace South Sudan, the, the hashtag that started on Twitter and, and everything that, that you and, and not only your mates from South Sudan, but, but mates that you've had from, from all around the soccer world, from here in San Diego to players with FC Dallas back in Texas and, and, and a number of other teams from around the country here in America who, who got on board with this. Talk about hashtag Football for Peace South Sudan. Um, so football, hashtag full for Peace South Sudan was a movement. Um, it was to help uh, spread the awareness of the issue that's going on in South Sudan and also to, to help these people through football, which are my people. And um, being, being a part of that, it's, it's amazing. And getting guys, you know, from actually Dallas, from the previous clubs. And, you know, just as simple as just writing hashtag full for Peace South Sudan and holding it up and taking a picture, and it was massive. The fans back home saw that, and, and it made them smile, because now other people from other countries are thinking about them. They're willing to put a hand for, for, for this cause and, and to bring unity to, to the people, because then now it becomes more than just soccer. 
Now it becomes more, it becomes to where you got to unite the country. You got to build the future for the younger generations that are coming up and break that chain of, of, of being different tribes and separation and hate. So that's what we try to do for hashtag football for peace also then. And we're still working on it. It's still in the works. There's still a lot to be done. And so keep an eye out for that, uh, you know, and, and just, just share the word, spread it out. Dutch, thank you so much for joining us, Dutch Jock. And before we let you go, we talk about giving every guest a hashtag. Okay. We already have hashtag football for peace South Sudan. What do you want your second hashtag to say? Hashtag third world. Can we do it? Hashtag third world. Bam. Dutch Jock, South Sudan national team, San Diego's finest, Delmar Carmel Valley Sharks. We'll be back with you in a moment right here on Soccer Nation TV. I want a pair of these. Hypervenoms? Hypervenom 3s. Tech Craft. Actually, I haven't, even, I haven't looked at these before. Those are the full leathers, right? These are the leathers. The full leather. Available at SoccerLoco.com. Available at SoccerLoco.com. Available at some of the retail locations as well. We've got Brick and Mortar, Chula Vista, San Diego, Carlsbad, Mission Viejo. Don't forget Mission Viejo. Don't forget Mission Viejo. What do you, is, it, is it true if you hold it up to your ear, you can hear the roar of the crowd? I also hear the net rippling. Nate Abarea back with DK and Iwo. So the show's off and running now. So I tell. So I can tell. Yeah. What do you think of the show so far? So far, so good. I mean, I did the intro. I, um, I'm really excited to, to watch all of Dutch. Yeah. But so far, so good. So far, so good? Yeah. You gotta understand how, how nice it is getting DK's approval. Like, it's not the easiest thing to attain, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, when I get, like, positive feedback from him, it really makes me happy. Yeah, well, I wouldn't say that there are standards to uphold, but, you know, occasionally, occasionally, there are. So what do you think about this room? Not bad. Like Not the room? Bad. There's a lot of there's a lot of Pogba in this room. A lot, a lot of Pogba in this room. A lot room. of United in this room, which I approve of. What do you want your hashtag to be? <sighs> Probably just hashtag DK. That's more than good enough in most places. Okay. You're on it. Hashtag DK. I'm not really sure what that is. What did we just do? Did you just create something? Yeah. Oh, okay. We did. Cool. It's artistic. It's art right here. I love art. I know, it's fantastic. All right, well, DK, I think that wraps up the first episode of this new show. I think so. I Soccer think Nation so. TV. Coming to you live? No. Coming to you live in the future. Live in the future. Wherever you are, you're living now if you're watching this. In YouTube. We're doing the show in YouTube. Inside the tube? We're in the tube right now. Hmm. Live. For you. I always wondered about the air quality in here. Uh, before we go, before we end this first episode of Soccer Nation TV, uh, do you want to win the World Cup with me? Sure. How, yeah. does, how does that happen? Look, we won, we won the World Cup. Why is it facing you more? Should it face... Did you? Because I scored the winner. Oh, but I gave, I, you the, I gave you the assist. I scored in overtime. I passed you the ball. I'm the German. No, no, it was us. It was us. Soccer Nation wins the World Cup. Teamwork Soccer Nation TV makes the signing work. off. From San Diego, California. Bye for now.